Now let's get serious for a minute and talk with a gentleman by the name of Gerald White. Gerald is an unusual man in many ways. He is a man who has a heart to help others who have the same disease he once had, and he is on a mission. Welcome, Gerald. I'm glad to have you today. Thank you, Dee. It's a pleasure to be here and to share experiences with you and the the cancer population, caregivers, and other concerned people out there. I, I hope that this program is of value to people and will give them a new will to survive. Well, we're believing for that as well. You know, um, I know that you're a survivor of kidney cancer. Would you like to tell us your story? Uh, I'd be pleased to. I was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 1993, and mine at that time was a very large one. In fact, there was talk that it probably was a record in terms of size. And, upwards of 20 pounds. Uh, That's big. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It, it's big. And, and so was the operation to get it out. Mm -hmm. uh, like so many cancer patients who've gone through surgery, you always hear, well, we got it all. Uh, you're cancer free now. <laughs> There's always that stage of euphoria. But that didn't last long for me because mine recurred in the renal bed. Uh, Theoretically, they never come back in the renal bed, but it did, and so we had to use the same scar to get another surgery in, which was quite painful. But the real trouble began a few months later when the metastatic growth to the lungs began to occur, and uh, we had uh, spread to adjacent organs from the original primary. And with kidney cancer, this is really a bad thing because it puts you into the category of people where the survival statistics get pretty grim. After eight solid months of this interleukin therapy, uh, the cancers must have liked it because they kept on growing. And so <laughs> I decided to go out on my own in this regime of guided imagery, prayer, and meditation that I had derived the hard way through hours in libraries and computer and internet work. And I felt like that there was an opportunity there via the neural path, so-called mind-body medicine, to activate the immune system to kill this thing. Well, I guess at that point you were ready to try anything. Well, yes. Uh, when you're told that you've got about three months to live and you need to take care of all your affairs, then uh, you start, uh, all uh, alternatives look reasonable at that time. But I want to insist that this is not alternative medicine, what we'll be talking about here. I went on this regime where I would do simple relaxation meditation, and then the guided imagery, the communication with the subconscious mind through images. And this because, was self-instruction? Yes. Uh, in that days, I had to because although there's some good texts written, there were none of them specifically for this purpose to help me, and I sort of had to put it together myself. Three months later, I went back to the same oncologist. He put the films up and said, well, I'll be a son of a gun, except he said something besides gun, and <laughs> I don't know where they went, but they ain't there no more. Well, I wow. knew then we'd won a victory, and it's been stable ever since. There's been no recurrence. Well, that's so unbelievable. We praise God for miracles. <laughs> but I decided not to let it go there. Many people will walk away from a survivorship, and that's one of the troubles with the cancer system today is that the survivors are treated pretty much like the corpses. They're all swept out and uh, we work on death instead of life. And I decided that I'm going to work on the life side of this thing, and I started writing this book, Cancer Wars, Mars Journey. The spelling M-A-A-R-S is an acronym. It stands for Mind Activated Antigen Recognition System. And if you read the book, you will see what we mean by that term. Antigen is to a cancer cell like a fingerprint is to a human. And if the immune system recognizes this, there's never been a cancer found they couldn't kill. Wow. So the idea is to try to get it activated. This is Now, if I say to you, have you ever heard of a macrophage or a neutrophil or I a T lymphocyte no. <laughs> or an NK cell? Well, neither have any other cancer patients, and yet I just named some of the prominent weapons in your arsenal. These things are the killers. Within your body. Within your body. And these are perfectly capable of killing cancer if you can just get them into the fray. Wow. So this book was... Uh, by that time, I had been active in the cancer group, the Kidney Cancer Association. I was on the board of directors of there for three years, during which time I met a lot of people in high places in the business, one of which was Dr. Nick Vogelzang, who's director of all cancer research at the University of Chicago. And when I wrote this book, which was designed to give people a heads-up start on this so they wouldn't have to spend the hours that I had to spend, I could go right to it, because sick people 
sometimes have trouble doing research. Right. So Nick was kind enough to give up time on a sunny beach on a vacation to edit this book for what us. What a deal. <laughs> it was really great. And now what is happening, we're starting to get these <laughs> report after report of people who by all rights should be dead but aren't. And uh, They're reading your book. Yes. Yes, they are. And they're using it and they're focusing and they're staying concentrated. If we can turn these people from fear and anxiety and depression in the direction of hope, then move them through hope with good scientifically based information to give them a not only a spiritual but a scientifically valid reason to hope that all of a sudden we can move them to expectation. Right. And, and a way to healing. Yes. And if the expectation of a remission becomes logical, then it's not right. unknown for it to occur. Right. So what we feel like we may be dealing with here is an, is an opportunity to initiate remissions if we can just understand it. Right. And that's the subject that uh, a doctor in New York once told me that we ought to be studying is why do these people go into remission? Well, because what they're afraid. No, oh, the, oh, you're the, talking about the whenever that, they... Oh, I see. Miracle cancer remissions that okay. take place. We don't study those. Nobody does. And that's what we ought to be studying. Uh -huh. And we feel like that with success in this program, we'll go case by case until such time that by preponderance of numbers, that which was dismissed as anecdotal, yeah. becomes scientifically accepted fact. Are we talking about mind over matter? Not exact. Not at all. What we're talking about is a, a mental state or attitude that sets things to happening in the human body. Let me give you an example. All right, give I'll, me an I'll example. Do, I'll do a mind with you right here. Okay. Let's imagine the biggest, juiciest, squishiest lemon you ever heard of in your life. Now let's roll that lemon around, crush it, squish it, get and a you knife. you see that in your get mind? A knife. You see it in your mind. Now, now, I want you to do this. I want you to imagine this. Now, take a knife and cut the end off that lemon. Now, put it to your mouth and squeeze the juice into your mouth. Imagine all that coming into your mouth. Mm -hmm. Did your salivary glands activate a bit? A absolutely. <laughs> All right. Here I am, a total stranger. I've entered into your mind and activated one of your glands to achieve a function. And I never even knew it. And you never even knew it. Uh -huh. So what we're trying to do now is do a similar exercise by which the person can cause his subconscious mind to send neutrophils, macrophages, to target and kill a cancer cell. It's actually giving a message to your body, That's to the, exactly a certain right. portion of your body. See, the subconscious left brain is the one we do our arithmetic with and all our conscious uh -huh. thought. The subconscious, the right brain, we don't communicate with it. it. It causes their heart to beat, their lungs to breathe, and all this stuff. It also is where your artistic temperaments come from. Right. There's a lot of things to it. But what we're trying to do, since they operate at different frequencies, we're trying to communicate instructions to it to do a specific thing through imagery. Great. And the book contains how to do, and the tapes are available too. So. Well, give me an example of uh, someone who has used this imagery and has actually received healing. Well, I'll give you a good example of this. The man's name is Herb Scheidel. He is president of an international corporation that deals with uh, educational materials for people who wish to speak English, particularly in the Orient, Hong Kong, Japan. I met uh, Herb in 1998. He had just been diagnosed by a Mayo Clinic with uh, renal cell cancer. They found out that it had spread to his other kidney, to his lungs, and to several other organs as well. And he was wow. essentially told to go into hospice care. Yeah, scary. We, we can't do anything for you. Well, Herb had heard about my work and called me on the telephone one day, and we must have talked an hour. And I had the book already written at that point. It had not been in the Internet. Yet it hadn't been packaged, but I got a, a hand copied copy to it, and I also made a, a cassette tape for him, a guided imagery tape that he could play. Sit down, and listen to, and it. or he could listen while he's sleeping at night or, or whatever. You, see, the nice part about this, you can do the work while you're asleep. Yeah. It, wor it works even better then. And what happened? What happened was that the tumor started receding. Wow, that is awesome. Now let me tell you what that man did, and a show of appreciation, he had me record a cassette tape and he produced 10,000 copies of that tape and gave it to the Kidney Cancer Association wow. with $10,000 for postage so that anybody in the world that wanted that could get it free of charge. I just, gave awesome. you, I just gave you a copy of it. Yes. And so we've now had that translated into Chinese and the Urda version of Southwest Asia is coming up in August so that roughly three-fourths of the world's population will have access to this book 
and not a dime has changed hands. Wow. Well, you know the neat thing is you not only have lived defeating ca kidney cancer, but you won the victory over your own health and are now helping others to do the same. You're a very special individual for sure, Gerald.